something else called spermidine, which um, is able to clear away damaged cells in your body. And it's called through a process called autophagy. So we're always getting damaged cells. And anytime we have a cell that's damaged, damaged cells occur um, you know, just, just from normal metabolism. But as our telomeres start to get shorter, um, the telomeres always take the hit. So telomeres are those tiny caps on the end of your chromosomes. And they always are like sacrificing themselves because they don't want your DNA to get the damage. Because if your DNA get, gets the damage, it could lead to cancer. So they um, take the hit, and as they start to get shorter, it accelerates their shortening because they already get shorter each year. Then what happens is the cell becomes what's called senescent. And what that means is a cell just sits around in your bloodstream or in your kidney or in your liver or whatever organ we're talking about, and it's not really alive, so it's not me- metabolic, but it doesn't like go away. It's not dead. So what it does, it just sits there, and it starts to secrete um, pro-inflammatory cytokines, which then activate nearby immune cells to like fire away nasty chemicals and damage more cells. So what happens is you start to damage nearby cells. You can think about like, have you ever noticed like when you get a gray hair? So gray hair, you'll get senescent um, melanocytes, which are the the cells that produce the pigment. You'll get one that's senescent, so it's just kind of sitting there, and it so it causes a hair follicle or hair to become gray. And then all the other cell, hair cells around nearby, you always get them like near each other. And part of that has to do with the fact that the senescent melanocyte in this case, which is you know in the hair follicle, is secreting all this nasty stuff that then damages other nearby. Um, hair cells. Wow, that's fascinating. So, oh, so anyways, back to the spermidine. The spermidine <laughs> actually clears away, it, it, it activates this whole genetic system we have in our body called autophagy, which is like self-eating. So we start to like eat the cell and like clear it away. And recently, like within the last like month, a study came out where um, scientists actually re- engineered mice uh, using CRISPR technology to clear away all the Every time they had a senescent cell, you and I are getting senescent cells right now, like right now. Sorry, Jamie. It's happening. It's like it's happening all the time. Um, but but these, these researchers did this brilliant experiment where they designed, um, they were like, okay, a senescent cell has a certain marker on it. And so they then said, okay, when this marker gets expressed, I want you to like have the, you know, have the, these immune cells go and clear it away and eat it. And so every time there was a senescent cell, the immune system cleared it out, and the mice ended up living 30% longer than wow. their normal lifespan. Pretty cool. Wow. So autophagy, it's called. It's pretty cool. And there are other things that actually increase it. Um, resveratrol. Resver- resveratrol from – it's it's a one of those plant compounds that's – this has been a recent obsession of mine, but plants make, like, natural insecticides, and – you know, for millions of years, plants have been figuring out a way to like ward off insects and fungus and, you know, because they, they also want to stay alive, just like we do. And they, they don't actually make enough of this chem- like these chemicals to kill the insect. It's kind of like just go away. So they often affect their nervous system um, and just kind of make them go away. But what's really cool is that these compounds in plants, and there are so many different ones actually have a hormetic effect on us. So that hormetic effect being in small doses, it activates our whole stress response pathway like exercise does. And so um, resveratrol is actually made in grape skins and also blueberries make to a much less degree, but it's made to ward off fungus. And uh, resveratrol has been shown, at least if in, in, a, in a high dose, like 1,000 milligrams a day, to clear away, it activates... It actually activates this whole genetic pathway that gets activated when you're fasting. Fasting is another type of hormetic stress. So when you're fasting, you, you cause damaged cells to um, you know, clear away. You also basically start to turn on all these genes that help you deal with stress because your body's like, oh, my God, I can't. I don't have food. I, you know, I need to deal with this. So you activate all these really good you know, genetic pathways where you're making more antioxidants. You're making more anti-inflammatories. You're making more brain cells. You're preparing um, just everything good. Um, so resveratrol kind of is thought of a, cal- like a mimetic of fasting in a way because it activates like one of these pathways that gets activated and it changes gene expression. I've been very skeptical of the resveratrol literature for quite some time um, back in 2003 or so when it was uh, first 
first kind of came into the aging world, I was very skeptical of it, mostly because a lot of the studies that have been done in animals where they feed animals resveratrol, they feed them such large amounts that are just like not relevant to humans. So I was like, well, so what, you know? But the more I've been reading about it recently, the more I've become a little more convinced that there actually may be something to to this resveratrol. It's activating this pathway called SIRT1, which is globally changing gene expression. It's epigenetics. It's 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 activating all these good things and deactivating bad things. And so, um, there's really it's really interesting. There was a study that was published not long ago, a couple years ago, that was done in monkeys, where monkeys were given a high sugar diet and a high sugar plus high fat, which is a bad combo. And they gave them resveratrol. You know, either gave them resveratrol or didn't. And the monkeys that did not get resveratrol, um, their arteries were like really stiff. That caused their arteries to stiff by like forty percent. But the resveratrol resveratrol completely like negated that so i was like wow maybe i should start looking into the resveratrol again because it's a little it's a little interesting 